Oh. Did you know that you can use OBS Studio to add graphics and stuff to our live stream? No, that's awesome. Do you think you could add a couple graphics and spice up our live stream a little? Sure, just don't go adding too many things, otherwise we might get do it. Hi, I'm Nick and welcome to Black Bar. I know what you're thinking. This isn't Caleb. Who is this guy? Well, at the time of this filming, Caleb's probably off playing Factorio, having himself a very well-earned break. So let me give you a brief introduction. I'm one of the content creators at Black Bar, and I also have the incredible privilege to work at Grand Rapids First Church as their video specialist in the marketing department. Before that, I studied at the University of Valley Forge in digital media studies. I've worked in live production, marketing, and a couple of short films. But you're not watching this video because you're interested in me. More likely you've just started live streaming your service and now you're wondering, what can I do to bring my live stream to the next level? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about three ways that you can bring your live streaming to that next level through your editing and your directing. First things first, let's address a few things. Some of you are broadcasting your videos live and others of you are pre-recording your services and then broadcasting them live. The tips I'm gonna tell you will apply to both processes. The difference is in how much time you'll have to make those choices. With editing, you have almost as much time as possible. When directing live, you have to make these choices within a fraction of a second. Either way, these tips should help you make an informed decision on how to improve your live stream. That being said, a lot of these tips will be more of a 101 course. We're hoping to cover some of the more advanced topics in the future, but if you can't wait that long, you can always talk to us or our certified pros on our Discord. The link is in the description. Number one, tell a story. People love stories, and when they hear a good story, it sticks with them much longer. I think there's a reason Jesus spoke to people in parables. Humans resonate with them. And our job as creatives and technicians is to tell your pastor's story as well as possible. For me, this means constantly asking the same question. Does this help tell the greater story? For example, I could suggest that we introduce a jib as part of our services. They capture great sweeping shots that look incredible. It could make our worship services look amazing. And I've had a lot of experience operating one, but Right now, those sweeping shots would only communicate how empty our sanctuary is because of the quarantine. It might actually distract our audience's attention from worship to the structure of the building or the empty chairs. It's not going to tell the story we want people to hear, which is a more personal service with our worship team and our pastor. If nothing else, this is the one thing I want you to remember from this video. Does this help tell a story? It's gonna be a question that will come up again and again as we learn more about different ways to bring your service to the next level. Now, number two, multi-cam setup. One way to quickly increase your production level is to introduce more cameras. Now, as shown in the opening sketch, you shouldn't just add more things because you can. Going back to our question, does this help tell a story? Will multiple camera angles help tell a story? Often the answer is yes. Let's say right now, all you're doing is filming your pastor with one webcam and using OBS to broadcast it. Side note, if you haven't watched our videos about using OBS Studio, now is the time to pause this video, click the link, and go watch it. If you have access to a secondary camera available to you, you can create a two camera setup. When filming your pastor, I would recommend using one camera as a wider shot, framed perhaps from the feet to the top of their head, and the other one something a little closer, perhaps from the waist to the top of their head. You can cut between these two shots to communicate different parts of your story. For instance, let's start with a wider shot. Let your audience understand where they are. It gives them an opportunity to understand the location that the event is happening in. Some people might call this an establishing shot. It establishes where you are. Cutting to the closer shot will eliminate some of the background environment. It will cause your audience to focus more on what is happening in frame. I use this to emphasize what is being said by our pastor. The camera is really a substitute for your eye. When you're having a conversation with someone and they say something that piques your interest, suddenly you're really focused on them. You stop paying attention to the environment around you, and you might even lean in closer to the speaker to hear them better. This kind of cut mimics that behavior. By using this cut, you could subconsciously tell your audience that what is being said is important and to pay attention. 
but perhaps you don't have two cameras that you can use. Uh, you only have one. There is a way to turn one camera into two. This is actually a trick that we use when filming our black bar videos. For us, it's a way to shorten our editing process. Instead of dealing with two cameras or two recordings, we only need one to edit. Here's what we do. First, we consider the end product. When we post our videos on YouTube, we post a 1080p file. This is roughly standard right now for most videos that you watch online. However, we record our videos in 4K. This means we film about twice the size of our final product. This gives us the ability to zoom in about 150% before we begin losing quality in the video. You can do this same technique in OBS Studio with a 1080p camera, but you will be sacrificing video quality at that point. If you do this, I would recommend broadcasting about 720p instead of 1080p. This is what I would consider about the minimum standard for HD video. You can still scale a 1080p video by 150% to get a 720p option. Effectually, it will give you a wider shot and a closer shot that will help tell the story of your video. You can even do this with your worship service. Have a wider shot and include the entire worship team, and then have a closer shot focus on the lead singer. Now you have a camera dedicated to just the lead singer and a camera that you can cut to during the instrumental portions. Number three, graphics. Another way to up your game is to add graphics. Now we've already covered how to add graphics using OBS Studio. So again, if you haven't watched that video, pause here and go watch that now. You'll be able to find that video by clicking the annotation in the corner. I'm gonna focus less on the technical side and more on the creative side of where and when to use graphics. Like I said again in the opening uh, sketch, you know, sometimes less is more. A good starting place is with using two types of graphics. They are full screen and a lower third. The difference between the two is fairly self-explanatory. A full screen image will take up your entire screen and a lower third will only take up the lower third of your video. Usually you'll use a lower third to introduce information that's important but doesn't need your full attention. For instance, someone's name. You may want to use a lower third to introduce your pastor the first time he appears on screen. This will let your audience know who's talking without taking their attention completely out of the scene. You can also use lower thirds as a way to help people take notes. Perhaps you hand out a study guide with your sermon. You can use a lower third to emphasize an important point, the start of the thought, the lyrics of a song, or a scripture verse. The key to keeping them from becoming distracting is to only have them on screen as long as is needed to see the information and to digest it. A clip shouldn't be longer than the time it takes to read information two or three times. Anything more than that, and it's probably just gonna become a distraction. Side note, if you're going to put someone's name on screen, don't cut away from them. It can be equally distracting to have information on screen that isn't relevant to the video that's on screen. Perhaps you don't really care to show the live content at that time, or you have so much information to show that you really need to use the whole screen. This happens most when using an image or a really long scripture verse. These kinds of graphics you can leave up as long as it is relevant to what is being said by your speaker. Once your speaker or pastor moves away from the image or topic, you should too. Your audience is going to want to see who is speaking more than the text on a screen. Let's also talk about how your graphics get on your video. You may not have the ability to animate your graphics right now, so let's stick with cutting and fading. These are two options that are already available in OBS Studio and most video editing software. In 90% of your cases, you're going to want to fade in and fade out your graphics. The idea is that you want to add to what is already being said on screen without being distracting. A hard cut to a graphic can appear very suddenly and feel jarring to your audience. They'll notice the graphic immediately and most likely have all of their attention drawn to it rather than the information at hand. A one second fade in and fade out will help introduce new information without removing their attention. Finally, the most important thing you can do to improve your video is better audio. It sounds a little paradoxical, but trust me, it's true. You can have a beautiful image, but if your audio sounds terrible, people will walk away thinking your broadcast was bad. I'd love to go into detail about how to make better audio for your live stream, but to be honest, I don't feel like I'm the most qualified to do that. Instead, we'd like to make a whole video dedicated to just audio in the future. So be on the lookout for that. And again, if you have urgent questions that you want answered sooner, you can always hop onto our Discord. Um, Caleb, Zach, and myself, along with our certified pros, we're over there every single day helping people. So if you have a question and really want something answered, please join us there. We'd be happy to help you. And that's it. 
three ways to quickly improve your live streaming. It can be a lot of hard work, but it's worth it. It's so worth it to be able to communicate to your audience more effectively. And remember, in all the busy work that we have going on, don't lose sight of the reason why we do this. We get the incredible opportunity to tell the greatest story ever told. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget, we also have a podcast where we'll talk a little more in depth about the topics we discussed today. If you haven't already joined our Discord, what are you doing? I've literally said it like three times in this video. It's a great community. We're helping each other all the time. Join it. It should be really beneficial for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in our next video.